One of, one of the greatest blessings to desire for oneself and offspring during final moments before death. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. Allah, the Exalted, said. And who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim, Abraham, i.e. Islamic monotheism, except him who befools himself? Truly, we chose him in this world and verily, in the hereafter he will be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, i.e. be a Muslim. He said, I have submitted myself, as a Muslim, to the Lord of the Alamin, mankind, jinns and all that exists. And this, submission to Allah. Islam was enjoined by Ibrahim, Abraham, upon his sons and by Yaqub, Jacob, saying, O my sons, Allah has chosen for you the true religion, then die not except in the faith of Islam, as Muslims' Islamic monotheism. Or were you witnesses when death approached Yaqub, Jacob? When he said unto his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your Ayla, God Allah, the Ayla, God, of your fathers, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismail, Ishmael. Ishak, Isaac, one Ayla, God, and to him we submit, in Islam. That was a nation who has passed away. They shall receive the reward of what they earned and you of what you earn. And you will not be asked of what they used to do. Al-Baqarah. Ayat 130-134. No one turns away from the religion of Abraham, peace be upon him, to other ways of life except those who do not know their own worth and are content with humiliation. God chose him as a messenger in this world and as a friend of God, and in the hereafter he will be one of the righteous people who fulfilled what God required them to do. And so reached the highest levels. Allah chose Abraham because of his swiftness in surrendering, telling him to be faithful and devoted to him in worship and to humbly do as he instructed. Abraham replied to his Lord saying that he had surrendered in devotion to him, who created his servants, providing for them and taking care of their affairs. Abraham advised his sons to also say, I have surrendered to the Lord of people, and Jacob told his sons to do the same. They told their sons that Allah had chosen for them the religion of surrendering and devotion, Islam, and to hold on to it tightly until they died. Surrendering sincerely to Allah on the inside and the outside. Were you present at the time of Jacob's death, when he asked his sons what they would worship after he had died? They replied to him, saying that they would worship Allah, the Lord of his forefathers Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac, namely, the one Allah without partners. And they said that they surrendered in devotion to him alone and were bound to him. That nation has passed away like other communities. They gained whatever they did in their lives, earning either good or evil, and you will gain what you have earned. You will not be asked about what they did, and they will not be asked about what you do. No one is held to account for the disobedience of another, but everyone is rewarded according to their own actions. You should not be distracted from paying attention to your own behavior by looking at what those before you did. Nothing will benefit anyone except his own good actions. Al-Baqarah 130-134 Regarding Allah's statement Or were you witnesses when death approached Yaqub, Jacob? When he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your Ayla, God Allah, the Ayla, God, of your fathers, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismael, Ishmael, Ishak, Isaac. One Ayla, God, and to him we submit, in Islam. Al-Baqarah 133 Imam as sadi may Allah have mercy upon him, said, when it is the case that the Jews claim to be following the religion of Ibrahim and after him Yaqub, peace be upon them, Allah, the Exalted, rejected their claim, saying, Or were you witnesses, meaning, were you, present? When death approached Yaqub, Jacob, meaning, in the beginning of the affair and what led to it. When he said to his sons in order to test them and so as to receive the joy when he is still alive that they would fulfill that which he commanded them, saying, What will you worship after me? So they replied. We shall worship your Ayla, God Allah, the Ayla, God, of your fathers, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismail, Ishmael, Ishak, Isaac, one Ayla, God, meaning. Neither will we ascribe anything as partners to him, Allah, in worship nor declare anyone as his co-equal. And to him we submit, in Islam, see footnote A, so they combined pure monotheism and deeds, in this response of theirs. An excerpt from Tafsir as Sadi. 
slightly paraphrased. Tahit at the time of departure from this world. Imam ibn al Kayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, said. The Shahada, i.e. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah, at the time of death wipes away one's evil deeds. This is because the one who utters it at the time of departure from this world does so with certainty and knowledge of its true meaning. All his desires, i.e. desire for the worldly life, come to an end and his rebellious soul, becomes, mild and submissive after being in, a state of, refusal and disobedience a, state of, approval. After turning away, and a state of humility after being held in high esteem. The, hearts and the soul's, eagerness for the worldly life and its merits departs and distances, from everything, whilst in the presence of its Lord, originator and true protector. Humble in the presence of its Lord, hopeful of pardon, forgiveness and mercy. Belief in the oneness of Allah dash, i.e. the belief in the oneness of Allah's lordship, that Allah alone is the creator, provider and the one in control of all the affairs of the universe. And that Allah alone has perfect names and attributes and that none is similar to Allah. And that Allah alone has the right to be worshipped, frees and distances the soul from that which leads to shirk, polytheism, and manifests the reality of its falsity. Therefore, those wishes which the soul busied itself with, in the worldly life, ceases, at the time of departure from this world, and all its concern is, directed towards, the one it is certain to meet, i.e. Allah. The person, who is blessed with the ability to utter this testimony of faith, focuses his attention completely on Allah turns to Allah with his soul and desire and submits to Allah alone. Inwardly and outwardly. The person's hidden affair, i.e. the heart and soul, and outward affair, i.e. what he proclaims, testify to the same thing, so he sincerely says. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. His heart is freed from attachment to other than Allah all the worldly, desires, leaves the heart because he is about to stand in Allah's presence. The intensity of his desire, for the worldly life, is extinguished and the heart is filled with the, desire for, the afterlife. And thus it becomes the attention of his eyes and the worldly life is forgotten. When, this sincere testimony is his last deed, it purifies him from sins and thus Allah enters him into a noble position. That is because he meets Allah with a truthful and pure testimony, whose outward manifestation is in agreement with what is hidden in the heart and soul. If a person made this testimony, with this type of conviction, during the time of well-being, i.e. whilst residing in the worldly life, he would not have placed great importance on worldly desires. Rather he would have attached himself to Allah alone. But, the fact of the matter is that, he made this testimony, in the worldly life, with a heart filled with desires, love of life and its means of subsistence. An excerpt from Alpha ID. Page, 91-92 slightly paraphrased. We ask Allah. O oh Allah! By your knowledge of the unseen and by your power over creation, let me live if life is good for me, and let me die if death is good for me, O oh Allah. I ask you to grant me, the blessing of having, fear of you in private and public, and I ask you, to make me utter, a statement of truth in times of contentment and anger. And I ask you for moderation when in a state of wealth and poverty, and I ask you for blessings that never ceases, and I ask you for the coolness of my eye that never ends. And I ask you, to make me pleased, after, your, decree, and I ask you for a life of ease, comfort, tranquility etc., after death. I ask you for the delight of looking at your face, i.e. in the hereafter, and yearning to meet you without any harm and misleading trials, coming upon me, O Allah. Adorn us with the adornment of Iman, and make us, from those who are, guided and guiding, others. Sunan and NASAE number 1305 and declared Sahih by Imam Albani, Rahmahullah, in Asahiha number 1301. O oh Allah! Rectify my religion for me, which is the safeguard of my affairs, rectify my worldly affairs, wherein is my livelihood, and rectify my afterlife to which is my return. And make life for me, as a means of increase in every good and make death for me as a rest from every evil. Sahih Muslim number, 2720.